Well, it's a real privilege to be in contact again with Professor Kali Pistorius. Uh, wow. We we met when I was uh, when I was in the UK, but you you have a uh, a very distinguished record. Just let's just put it into perspective for South Africans. Sure. You used to be the Vice Chancellor of the University of Pretoria. A lot of That's people right. wouldn't know that uh, Johan van Sel was before you. You took over from yeah. Johan. You were, you right. did it for eight right. years, and then. Uh, Cheryl De La, De La Rey, who took over from you, has now gone on to yeah. uh, do She's the same job New at Zealand now. New Zealand in Canterbury. What is right. a vice chancellor, just for those of us who aren't in academia? Well, depending on which country you're in, but say South Africa or the UK, the vice chancellor in Afrikaans used to be called the rector, right? So it's basically the CEO, in business terms, if you will, of the university. The chancellor is actually more a ceremonial position, so um, doesn't get involved in governance or management, plainly ceremonial. So the vice chancellor is actually is the guy that gets into trouble if some, something goes wrong. You know? <laughs> and then, of course, all universities have a council um, which govern the university, and then there's the chair of council, which is you know, chairs the governance body. But the vice chancellor is the chief academic officer, chief... Uh, Chief Marketing Officer, Chief Accountability Officer, and the guy that gets into trouble when things go wrong. CEO. And I guess immediately the thought would be, all right, well, we know what Johan von Sell went on to do spectacularly yes. with, with uh, Sunlam. Yeah, we know abso- that, absolutely. That, that Cheryl's gone off to New Zealand. So so where did Kali go to? And, of course, your, your move from University of Pretoria was to a much bigger job in the U.K., well, at Pretoria University, when I was the VC, they, uh, the appointment was sort of in five-year terms, right? So as I was getting to the end of my second five-year term, you, uh, you get to the realization that 10 years is enough. You know, the university needs somebody new after, after 10 years, and, and, and so does the incumbent, I guess. So, uh, so I got headhunted to, uh, to become the vice chancellor of the University of Hull in the UK, and that sounded like a really interesting op- opportunity. So we went to we went to Hull, uh, and I was the vice chancellor there for circa seven years. Um, and after fifteen years of being a vice chancellor, sort of Pretoria and Hull, you come to the you know to the realization it's time to get a proper job type type of thing. Yeah, that, that's enough. And I think it was more or less that time that that we met. So I then established a a consulting company which was uh was still is based in Hull that focuses on technology intelligence um, and that has been going great guns in the meantime i've also become uh, involved with uh, none other than the university of stellenbosch never thought i'd become a marty but, but i have now. <laughs> and uh and i've been, become involved with establishing a brand new online master's degree in engineering management um, and that is, it's an interesting thing. You know, it's the first time Stellenbosch University has got involved in the online only degree, recruits students all over the world, and, it, and it's really exciting, really exciting. Your own education, I, I've seen it. It's extremely prestigious. Without going through every line, uh, you have an MBA from MIT, which is well, not an MBA. Prestigious. It was hmm. yeah. It was actually a degree called manage, management of technology degree. So it's offered by the business school, the Sloan School of Business in in MIT, and it's an MBA like degree, but it actually focuses on strategic management of technology, in that sense, and um, and afterwards to sort of brush up on the general. I went to Harvard as well, and I got a. You know, got a got a qualification there, so I'm a, I'm an alumnus of both MIT and Harvard Business Schools for, for, that, for what that is worth. And in academia, it doesn't get any higher than that. I remember um, meeting with people from MIT who were proudly telling me that to get into that university in in Boston, uh, there are hundreds of applicants for every person yeah. who who manages to to get through. It's a fantastic place. I mean, just walking on the campus, you know, does things for 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 for, for a person. But it is a wonderful place, and, and it is it tops. It's really tops. So, Kali, we'll we'll talk about your business in just a moment. But this sure. new degree at Stellenbosch University, unpack it a little more for us, because Stellenbosch seems to be doing very very interesting stuff here in South Africa. Every now and then, something pops up that they 
for instance, they've just done a, a, a partnership with To You, which is a I think right. the world or edX, which is now owned by To You, the, the yes. global leader in online education. And yeah. every now and then there's something new coming out of Stellenbosch. What's going on there? Well, I've looked into, you know, as I say, I used to be a ticky very much now. Now I'm becoming a Marty and getting into more into it. So it's actually a great university, really fantastic place. The um, where I get involved in them, I try and stay out of the admin altogether and do the great stuff, the nice thing that professors can do. So, uh, so the engineering faculty is really one of the premier engineering faculties in the country, and it, you know it offers the, what you would expect: the electrical, industrial, uh, civil, process, also known as chemical, and so on. But what we discovered um, is that. In the undergraduate engineering program, which is a four-year program, students are exposed to what I like to call the beautiful things in life. You know, they do the science, the technology, the calculations, great stuff. But and uh, but but then you know the moment they walk out of the four-year degree and they get into the work, the world of work. I mean, even before the first tea time, I'm talking about engineering students now, they realise that there's more to the job of the engineer than doing the beautiful things in life. All of a sudden you discover you have to deal with people, right? And there's projects to manage and budgets to manage, decisions to make, complex problems to These are all things that are part of the job of the engineer that are not covered in great or any detail in the undergraduate program for very good reason. First of all, it's full of other things you need to learn. And these engineering management things are actually best learned or taught once you're out in the, you know, in the job, and um, you know you have a few arrows in the back and the blood and the togs and that sort of thing. And understand why you need to learn, learn these things. The problem is, or oh, let me just put it this way: in South Africa, engineers, early to mid-level engineers, get a uh, exposure to the job and take on quite some responsibilities very early on in their career. And they haven't been exposed to formal training education. So, so what can they do, right? They either go to the airport and buy a management for dummies book, or worse, they, they copy the bad habits of their bosses, you know, neither of which are actually ideal. So there is a real need for, for a structured education approach to teach engineering students the other bit of the job of the engineer, which they don't get undergrad. That's why across the world you find master's degrees in engineering management, where the purpose is to, to deliver a better engineer, mindful that part of the job of the engineer is managing a lot of these things. As opposed to, you know, I'm not an expert on MBAs, but an MBA would be deliver a better manager and sort of be able to manage everything. I, th I think that the portability of the MBA. So my, no, my, so that, my colleague, Clive Eckstein, his son, Neil, is actually studying engineering at, at uh, Marty's. Would the, his, his, his logical step then be, once he's finished his degree, to actually do an engineering management degree with you? Well, it, it depends on, you know, some students don't want a postgraduate degree. So, but say if they do, the choice is either do a research orientated master's degree and then you get to specialize in the technology bit of you know of, of, of other students prefer a master of engineering which covers a different field as i said altogether and then some would prefer perhaps later on to go the the mba the mba route but the master of engineering management is a well-known degree offered all across the world and the best universities, you know, including MIT, Stanford, Georgia, what would, would offer those. In South Africa, there are one or two options. You know, where I came from, Pretoria has a very good program and it's been going on for, for many years, very successful. But we've, what we've done is to say uh, a combination of new things. So our degree is specifically aimed at early to mid-career engineers as opposed to people who think the next step is becoming the head of a big mining company, for example. To, because we know that is where our requirement is. The other thing is to say we, we uh, built this degree from the start to be online. Right? 
Now, nobody would have thought, you know, a very reputable university with an online degree in engineering, only online two or three or four years ago. I was certainly not. Have. But COVID came and we learned a lot of things. You can work from home. You can study from home. You had to for, for some time. The technological abilities and capabilities advanced significantly. And with that, universities had to very quickly learn how to adopt their pedagogical approaches to enhance the learning environment for students. So putting all of this together, we said, well, we will make an engineering management degree aimed at that market segment, and we will have all the latest and the greatest technology coupled with pedagogical approaches. So our degree was designed from the start to be online as opposed to taking a residential one and so on. That's what we put together. So it's called a, a, a modular sort of a degree. So there are eight modules, a structured degree, eight modules and a, and a mini thesis that go with them. Um, and it's going. We had the first intake in January of this year. And of course, you know, when you do the degree and you plan the degree, you know, at some point, some university manager is going to ask you, well, you know, the budget side of it. So how many students will you get? And I, I had no idea, right? So I just came up with uh, maybe 30, right? So we made the budget. This year, we actually enrolled 82 students. They all enrolled. They go from Auckland to Vancouver and from Amsterdam to Antarctica was actually one guy. We had. And anything in between, South Africa a lot, Namibia, Zimbabwe, Eswatini, all this, and they're all online, and they speak, and they contribute, and they work in the groups, and they do everything. Our our entrance, our applications for next year have opened. I think so far we have 250 expressions of interest. So not everybody's going to enroll. Not everybody's going to be admitted, I would think. But I think that shows that we've we've hit the we've hit the nerve there. Um, and, and that's very exciting. <laughs> it's, 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 it's extraordinary because when we were talking last in London uh, and you, you have a, a company, um, which is a, a technical intelligence company. So if you want to keep up to date on what's happening in the, in the technology world, you being trained as an electrical engineer in, in your background, you, you, you remain very tapped into that. And I would have thought that would have, would have sucked all your time away. Uh, and yet here you are with a with a whole new project, a whole new venture, which is very successful. Well, man, there's a lot of synergy between the two. And the one thing, the company is exactly what, what you say. But in the company, I don't try and do everything, right? So the company is a very network company. And we've got associates all across the world that will that will help with the project. So we get a project on you know, so some mining specific issue, we will draw in people and then and they will help there and so on. So so it does take a lot of time, um, but as I say, networking is the is the key. Here. With with this thing in Stellenbosch, the fact that it's online means that we can the lecturers can all be online as well, including the people who build the degree can be can be online. So the same thing as we get a network of academics who can contribute in the online wherever they are in the world, they can participate. And they will. They do. They do, in fact, both for the lectures and for the study, uh, the research assignment. So from my side, it is, uh, you know, the company loses a bit of time. Uh, my job with the university is a uh, sort of, I don't know, not quite part time, not quite, but I mean, I do my bit. And, 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 and so it's sort of not, not a consultant, but a you know, help, helping them, but not a formal appointment, let me put that way. And, um, and a lot of the stuff in the academic side links very closely to what I do in, in my company. So you, you've, I mean, you do things you enjoy and then you find time. As, as, you know. Yeah, they, they say if you've got something that you really want done, find a busy person to do it for you. But, yeah, but yeah. Kylie, just to, to close off with, COVID, you've mentioned it almost in passing. Right. The whole, the all the work that you do is to help companies to understand right. how they should be adjusting for the future. That's been yeah. such a massive uh, dislocation right. to lots of uh, the way we used to do things. How, uh, give us a, a sense of 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 what Prof Pistorius sees the world, the new world of work, or the new normal being like. I think I think it's going to be a step change, different from what it was. 
I think at the height of COVID, the pen limit swung very much to uh, not, you know, from home sort of thing, not traveling. The positive side of that, in my view, is the technology for doing that advanced significantly. Now the pendulum is swinging back a bit. I don't think it's going to swing all the way back to where it was before COVID. But I think we should see it as not the pendulum swinging in one dimension. It might be swinging back, but in a completely three-dimensional way to another place. Right? So there is definitely a move to say some people prefer to work or not to go to the office on a daily basis every day. Some want to go to the office never. They want to be wherever in the world. And, you know, for some jobs that can be done. Some want to go to the office from time to time. But apart from that, we've also learned that meetings such as this one we have now can be conducted online very efficiently. You know, and if I see the meetings, I have just, just my interviews with the students that, that we have all over the world. I can speak with somebody in New Zealand one minute. The next minute I speak with somebody in Vancouver. The next minute I speak with somebody... Just, just sitting there. Now that travel is great from time to time, but it's not a requirement anymore. And so coming with that has been collaboration tools that go with that. So you can, you can, you can conduct very efficient working environment, which is, I don't want to say all online, right? But it's different from the, everybody has to go to the office. What you find is since people don't have to go to the office anymore, the real estate environment is changing. People are no longer looking for their homes to be close to the bus stop or the highway or this or the next thing and so on and so forth. So the, the longer effects or the broader effects are going to be much more profound and not, not everybody working from home all the time, but there's definitely going to be a shift in, in, in that way. So what do, you then, what do you then advise companies who are forcing their employees to go into the office? And we're seeing quite a bit of this where the companies are saying, okay, you've been at home now, now we need you back in, in, uh, in the yoke almost. I, 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 yeah, I mean, some jobs would require you need to be there, right? Um, but not, not all jobs require you to be there all the time. And I think companies need to look at this from a very open mind, not as a threat all the time. Because remember, the company, there are some threats in the sense that the company has built a culture over time. All of a sudden, they need to manage remote teams, manage remote cultures. You know, if you work from home and you slip in your kitchen, what are the insurance issues? It's, it's a difficult thing. And it's probably not going to settle overnight. But I think there's, there's a lot of worth in considering the options. Just, just looking at our program now, I mean, we can engage lecturers who live anywhere in the world now, either as a guest lecture or running an entire module. Nobody knows, cares where you, where you sit. So they, and in this degree of ours, there are no laboratories or anything. And if we want to do a factory tour, we do a virtual reality tour of whatever factory and fantastic, right? We would not have been able to do that if we insisted that all the lecturers stand in the, physically in front of the class all the time. Now, there's another opportunity and technologically we can handle it. So my advice to companies is keep an open mind on this. Don't just try and fight the fires or the look at what new opportunities are there. And in our world, innovation risk is both exploiting opportunities and mitigating the risk, the bad things, I mean, the threats. So in a nutshell, that, that's what I think. <laughs> Professor Kali Pistorius uh, with Stellenbosch University and uh, lovely talking with you, the Vice Chancellor of Hull and, and before that, Pretoria University. Lovely to see you involved in South Africa in a big way as well. And I'm Alec Hogg from biznews.com. Mm -hmm.